flesh eating disease. Is, is that a thing? Is that real? Okay, welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. And we have oh. Dr. Tom Warren, infectious disease, here to give you all of the information about flesh eating disease. Most importantly, if you have a comment or you have an experience with this, please share it to help other people know when they may be dealing with this. And because flesh eating disease sounds so scary, we came up with a better name for it. Necrotizing fasciitis. Okay, necrotizing fasciitis. Okay, let's call it that for now. Okay, so, so, so what is this? What, what causes this problem? So necrotizing fasciitis is a bacterial infection okay. uh, caused by group A streptococcus. Okay. It can be uh, rapidly progressing and yeah. life-threatening. Okay. So this is an infection that happens in your subcutaneous tissues, soft tissues of your body. And the key to it is it causes destruction of those soft tissues very rapidly and spreads very rapidly. Now, it's not exactly the bacteria so causing the damage as the in your immune system reacting to it. Yeah, it's a combination so. of the two. Yeah, the bacteria can release toxins, which cause tissue damage, and then it's the immune system response as well that can lead to uh, the illness. Yeah. And the necrotizing part is essentially just killing our tissue. That's right. The tissue becomes devitalized, dead, yeah. and needs to be cut away. Okay, and this happens to be uh, one of the diseases or conditions that involves multiple specialties of doctors in the hospital. This is not something you're going to treat at home or walk off. This is something you're going to the hospital, you're going to see infectious disease specialists, you're going to see surgeons because uh, part of the treatment is surgical in addition to medical. So, the signs and symptoms. How can I tell if I have flesh-eating disease, sorry, necrotizing fasciitis? Yeah, so it, there's often, it's very painful. So we, we say pain out of proportion. Okay. Um, there can be some redness. Um, sometimes the redness is absent, um, but pain is a, is a big feature. And uh, one of the hallmark features too is that it progresses rapidly. Okay, so rapidly progressing pain. Now who gets this? Not us, not healthy people, right? It can occur, group A streptococcus necrotizing fasciitis can occur in all ages. Okay, that's the key. It can happen to anyone regardless of your status of health, age, where you live, how old you are. Okay. Some of the scary things about so it. There's someone that develops pain out of proportion. You might have some redness. You might have some swelling. So you don't, you come on your family doctor and say, hey, can I come see you next Tuesday? I think I have necrotizing fasciitis. No, you go right to the emergency department. Okay. So you get there. They do an assessment. They do a physical examination. Is there anything specific that they can identify as, yeah, 100%, I know this is necrotizing fasciitis? No, there's no one blood test. There's no one imaging test. Really, the diagnosis is made by a surgeon right. when they go inside and have a look. Okay. All right. So the surgeon, as we mentioned, this is treated uh, multidisciplinary. And one of the treatments is surgical because you basically have to excise that necrotic tissue or the dead tissue. And, and really, it's a debridement down to the healthy tissue to stop it from progressing. And that can involve quite a lot of tissue damage from the surgical intervention, but mostly from the disease process itself. Yeah, this could be up to including a limb amputation. You could have to remove an entire limb. And a lot of people think, well, it's a bacterial infection. We have all these fancy antibiotics. Why can't we just treat it with antibiotics? What's the, what's the clinical answer to why don't antibiotics just work for this? Yeah, one is just that there's so much bacteria there. Overwhelming and, load. That's right. And, and two, just because the tissue is devitalized, the antibiotics might not get there because in it, for the antibiotics to get to the area, there has to be adequate blood supply. Right. So imagine like you're trying to fertilize your lawn with a water fertilizer, but you have a hose that doesn't shoot very far. So it might be able to trickle around the edges so it could save that part of your lawn, but it can't get to the areas that now no longer have access to water or essentially blood supply in your limb or your abdomen. And this is not just your limbs. It's not just your arms and legs. It could be your chest wall. It could be your abdomen. It could be your backside. Or it can go anywhere. So that's the thing. So you give antibiotics to help slow it down, but the surgery is the definitive treatment and it has to be very timely. And the good news is surgical treatment is very effective. Uh, the not so good news is it depends on how much that has progressed yeah. uh, to determine how much tissue you've lost, which includes your subcutaneous tissue, your muscles, your nerves, your arteries, your vessels. It doesn't distinguish. And sometimes it requires multiple trips to the operating room because in the operating room, you're assessing on a very quick basis how much you remove. So then if next day it's still progressing, somebody's gonna have to go back and take more. It's kind of that balance of taking as much as you have to, but as little as possible, because you're trying to preserve potentially a limb or something like that. 
Okay, now, is this a common condition, like everybody on the street's going to get this? No, it's a very rare condition. The bacteria itself, group A streptococcus, is common. Uh, off, you know, it's the cause of uh, streptococcal pharyngitis or strep throat. Right. Um, but necrotizing fasciitis itself is, is a very rare condition. Okay, so the good news is it's very rare. Um, I, mean, how many, I mean, basically maybe once every couple of years yeah. we, we would see this. Uh, uh, when Agreed. You know, or less. In the hospital or less. Yeah. Uh, way, 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 way more often we would get called to, to rule it out. Yeah. Uh, and very, you know, the, the reason that <clears throat> it we're called often to, to rule this out is because the condition is so devastating, even though it's so rare, it's better to err on the side of caution. And I mean, the, the definitive diagnosis is made um, surgically. However, the de decision whether or not to go to surgery. Uh, we make that decision quite often, and that's just based on clinical signs and symptoms and a close observation to make sure there's not a rapid progression. Dr. Warren, is this potentially fatal? It can be, yeah, particularly if it, the diagnosis is made late. Right, so the longer it delays, the higher the chances that your kidneys will be compromised or your heart or your brain or something else that is not recoverable. That's right. And if you've had it once, does that mean you're never going to get it again because you're immune to it now? Or can it happen more than once to a person? It can happen more than once, yeah. You're that would be very condition. bad luck. So your luck is that bad. Yeah, I've seen patients with that. Really? More than once? Yeah. Wow. Oh, I guess the good news is you survived the first one. That's right. There you go. All right. Okay. Now you know everything you need to know about necrotizing fasciitis. The take-home message is have a low index of suspicion. If you are worried about a red, swollen, very painful area in your body that's progressing quickly, get straight to the emergency room. And obviously for the healthcare practitioners, we, are, we know to deal with it quickly. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. Please leave a comment. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. And yeah, leave some comments. Tell some stories if you've heard of someone or if you've had a family member or if you've had it yourself. Share your experience with us. Thanks, Dr. Warren. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time.